Thanks so much, LT. Akron is this week. Of course, next week, the PGA Championship at Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York. Why don't we go back up there now, say good morning once again to Gary Williams, who's with a special guest, a man I met last week uh, when I was up there, referred to himself as the Quiet Harmon Brother. Good morning, guys. Uh, that's absolutely the truth, Damon. Craig Harmon, 42 years, his 42nd season as the head golf professional. You looked at me like, oh my gosh, it's been that long. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here with you. Uh, it's good to be with you. You played in this event in 1980 uh, as the head golf professional. The idea of how much this golf course has changed over the course of PGA Championships, U.S. Open in 1989, how much has it changed for the best players in the world? You know, basically they added yardage, uh, maybe 100 yards, 150 yards, uh, but not to add yardage to bring in our great landing area. So the, like the ninth hole is 420 yards long. They drive past this unbelievable landing area, so they made it about 460 to bring it in, but not to make the course longer. Uh, the modern pro can cut corners now, and uh, now they can on that ninth hole. You have talked to some of the players who've been through here, trying to get a little work done, uh, maybe first impression. For some, not first impression. Tiger Woods was here. You had a chance to chat with him. What did you have to say to him? You know, basically, he asked me about the back nine, told me he had to hit a driver on 12 and 14, but said, watch out for the rough on 15. The par three has a pond to the right. And I have never seen rough like that in my life. So if you miss the green left, you have no chance. And he actually had him on video hitting shots out of there, taking a full swing from about 10 feet and moving the ball about six inches. Did it about three straight times. So that'll be a curiosity to me. I think that'll be the most controversial hole in the tournament, really. Um, the idea of this championship being back here in, in this community, give us a sense of the excitement level, the energy level of your membership, how proud they are to host a major championship again. Well, I think it's a tap in for the PGA to come to Oak Hill because we have the same chair people uh, running the same areas of parking and volunteer stuff. And we have just such a great crew of members who do this stuff. So for the PGA to come here, it's easy. I can't imagine them coming to a club where no Nobody knew what they were doing. So uh, the community itself is a golf crazy community. They love it. Uh, they love hosting these major championships. Oak Hill isn't hosting it. Rochester is hosting it. The um, the scope of major championships. I mentioned U.S. Opens, PGAs. Having been the head professional and seen several, aside from the golf course, how much else has changed over the years in terms of the magnitude of an event like this? You know, right over here we have a media tent that's probably three times larger than 03. We have a merchandise tent that's 32,000 square feet. Uh, I did the Ryder Cup merchandise for the club. I think we had about an 8,000 square foot tent. I couldn't even imagine how much I could have sold in a tent like that. The, um, the idea of playing in this, your dad won a major championship. Yes. Your family, everybody knows your late brother Dick, who was a wonderful instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the idea of you spending your life in this game, what was it like to play in a major championship at the host club of which you were the head professional? Well, number one, incredibly emotional. Uh, I was doing the merchandise for the club, so I'd get here at 4.30, leave about 11 o'clock at night. But number two, I had a chance to play with Sam Steed, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas in practice rounds. Uh, I'd already played with Palmer and Nicholas, so I'm walking on the green and they said, Craig, we need one. Are you available? And I had to tell them, well, I got Sam Snead. I, I can't play with you guys. Uh, so I have memories like that other than the, the high score I shot. Uh, my memories are of moments like that. Uh, your father, as I alluded to, you, you have spent your life, as have your brothers and formerly your dad, serving this game. What's the greatest lesson your dad taught you? I would say the uh, greatest lesson, you have to have a duck's back, meaning the water never gets inside the feathers. Uh, you allow people to be who they want to be. Uh, you're not going to change by the time they get past 21 either, 21 years old. But just have a duck's back and enjoy the people as they come by. Find something good about them, and, but don't let it ruffle your feathers, which Butch and Billy could not do. Dick and I could do, by the way. <laughs> You mentioned uh, Butch and Billy. Butch has been very visible, obviously, He's very excited. Have you had a chance to talk to him since Phil Mickelson won the yeah, Open he Championship? Yeah, uh, I think his quote, a Butchy quote is, you know, that's probably the, the happiest he's been on all the majors he's won. <laughs> 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 well, he didn't win. This guy just won him. No, he thought that was a, an incredible emotional victory, that uh, the resiliency of Phil Mickelson is just legendary right now, that he can come back from his Open where he did not win the U.S. Open and win the British Open. Just unbelievable. Uh, Damon Hack will take a tip uh, from anybody, anybody walking down the street, 42 years as a head professional, giving thousands and thousands of lessons. Do you have a swing thought for Damon? You know, I, fortunately, I've seen him swing, and I say, Damon, we have paddle test huts right over there. I don't kill country, though, I tell you that. <laughs> Damon, the winter months, paddle is a great sport up here oh, at Oak Hill. I'll tell you what, if, if that Harmon's going to give me that tip, I got another Harmon 
Harmon here. Billy Harmon's in studio. <laughs> so maybe Billy's going to help you. Yeah. We can see your Harmon and raise your Harmon. Hey, hey, Gary, you've got to ask Craig what he shot in that 1980 PGA. I don't think he shared that with you. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, he can't hear what you said, but I'll tell you the story he told me, and you've told me this story before. You called your dad. He said, to ask him what he shot in that PGA, you said, you, you know, you talked to your dad. Your dad thought you were leading, but he said, I had the newspaper turned upside down. Yeah, that's a great joke. Same with Billy, who after the scores he posted in his uh, mini tour career, too. <laughs> but Pat thought he won seven tournaments. He was actually last place. <laughs> All right, this show's officially been harmonized. Back to you guys. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Greg. It is harmonized. It'll continue to be harmonized today as Billy's going to spend some time with us and Jay Haas on the range. We'll break down some of the great swings in the game of golf and also the big break NFL. We reveal.